Alex, when we talk about consciousness, normally we, we start with a foundational metaphysics that we believe. Sometimes it's not articulated, but everybody does. And typically in neurobiology, you start with a physicalist, materialist point of view, and, and, and then you do your neurobiology. Um, what, what I, and then same thing would be the case with non-physical, whether it's idealism or panpsychism or dualism or whatever. Um, what I want to try to do is, is to do the reverse and that says, don't have any fundamental ontology, don't have any fundamental metaphysics, start with what you believe about consciousness and see if, if a fundamental ontology can be derived from that. Uh, is, is that a, a possible way of thinking that gives us some new, new avenues? It's interesting, I never thought of it. Perhaps the phenomenologists, that's what they've tried to do because they've, as I understand, the philosophical tradition of phenomenology, they say, well, why don't we do epoche? And so we suspend judgment, yeah, which, yeah. Sounds to be, which sounds like, let's leave aside, to the degree that that's possible, all our philosophical ontologies, all, all our assumptions, and let's see what's in there, like the raw material, or as they call it, to the, to the things themselves. Yeah. Mm, but that's a kind of a yoga. I mean, I don't think that's something one can do like in, in an amateur way. They, they, they require a lot of effort to be able to do that. It, it sounds to me a little bit like mysticism in a way, because it's like you trying to introspectively, um, I was going to say think, but it's not even that, just, just apprehend the nature of the world, trying not to fall into any big um, cosmology to begin with. And I'm not sure how this can can be done because we all consciously or not have our own view of the world Agree. and our, our temperaments yeah. also matter a lot. Yeah, but that's from a, when you do, you're thinking about the question from a first person perspective, which is entirely valid. I was thinking more from a third person perspective that as I analyze consciousness, what, what, what do I see? And if, if I would come up with, with consciousness being uh, a purely material, then it would lead to a materialistic view. Right. If, if I have a sense that from first person or believing other people uh, experience, believing the mystics, even if you don't have your own mystical experience, if you believe them, then you would have this view that consciousness yes. is, uh, is more fundamental. So in a way, integrated information theory has attempted that, wouldn't you say? Yeah, yeah, because it's one of the few theories of consciousness today that start axiomatically from consciousness itself, you could say, from phenomenology. Yeah, right. This can be critiqued, all right, but the starting point is not, oh, I'm pretty sure that's what the brain does, and now I'm going, co going to concoct an information okay. theory of that. No, it's like, how, like very Cartesian, like, you know, I think therefore I am, or how, it, how, it, mm -hmm. how, does, how does the world appear to me, and what can I say that it's, it's in a way that cannot be doubted, and that's self-evident. And from it, how can I continue building it into a science? And that's why in, in the case of IIT, the axioms and the postulates need to be translated and transposed into you know, mathematics and so on. And that's as well difficult and problematic. So that would be an example of how to yeah, attempt that, to do that. That's good. Uh, 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 integrated information theory would be that process. And you can disagree with where they start and where they end, but the process is from the, taking consciousness seriously yes. as a primary thing and then seeing where it leads. Uh, phenomenology, I, I would agree, as the same thing, but they're, they, they've been less, uh, shall we say, bold in, in coming to what the, the ontology is. They say you have to keep yes. the phenomenology and the neuroscience e yes. e with equal um, Im import, uh, uh, but they, 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 can't, they don't seem to make progress. Not that that's wrong, maybe you can't make progress, Progress I, to the wrong answer is, is not progress. I have phenomenology very close to my heart and I, and I love the inactivism that leads to phenomenology or that comes from phenomenology. But I, as, I've, as I've done, I, I've critiqued this idea of the blind spot, which is essential that we, that we acknowledge that you know, experience is what is a condition of possibility for science. Therefore, to explain it away with science, it's like, it's like cutting your own feet and pretending <laughs> it didn't happen. But one problem that phenomenology has, I believe, is that as I put it metaphorically, it's like being trapped between a first and second floor. So, because the phenomenologists uh -huh. don't want to, they refuse metaphysics. 
But then when you ask them, well, what you're saying is this science or if you, if you ask them if that's science, they say, no, 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 here we are operating as philosophers. And when you say, well, when they, when they speak um, as if they were philosophers, it's the other way around. So ph phenomenology is a really important starting point, but its project, I, I would not say has failed, but it's, it's stuck because at some point you need to make progress and this doesn't happen because it's, it's in this middle layer between the business of doing science and the business of being a See, philosopher. I look upon that as a very important fact. I don't look, I, 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 I'm not critical of that. I'm recognizing that. And I use that meta-analysis of, of phenomenology going to that point and then being stuck uh, as, as an important data point to look at in my whole evaluation. Yes. Yes, maybe it's a mode of, you can visit that mode of being a phenomenologist. The challenge is then, if you want to go back to the lab, how do you do it? And neurophenomenology was, is the program that articulated that. But it's, I think it's really, let me, let me wrap it up with this. It's really hard because as I understand the project of science in these four centuries, it was meant to exclude the subjective aspect mm. of things. So when you try to bring it back, either you bring it back as uh, second class or if you try to put it at the same level, then there's some really strong tension within the scientific method. Mm. And perhaps that's a science of the future, a science that can be done also from the first person. But I don't know how that's done yet.